Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. Recently, in a video made by Vsauce, which was very exciting to see. Uh, so, today we're actually going to be doing something pretty interesting with physics. Yes, we haven't messed too much with physics in this game. I mean, we've done some pretty extreme things, but today we're going to do a hypothetical, which everyone loves. And we're going to ask the question, what if everything in our solar system just stopped moving and we're going to do this in two ways we're going to kill everything's velocity and then let them accelerate again and then we're going to kill everything's velocity and freeze them in place and never let them gain velocity again and we're going to see the effects of both of these events but first off we're going to be doing testing as if we lost all the velocity and then allowed it to restart now as you can guess the sun is the largest uh, object that we're going to be dealing with, which is going to make all of them accelerate towards the sun, maybe slightly get thrown off by bigger objects like Jupiter if they're going by some of these meteors and meteorites. Uh, wait, no, that's only once they're on in the atmosphere. Asteroids. They're all asteroids and comets out here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do zero velocities, and this is going to be interesting because everything is going to just stop. As you can see, nothing is moving. You can see the lines from where they were moving before, but they are in fact not moving at all. The amount of speed that has been lost on the planets is so great that instantly stopping like this would cause so many problems now we're going to assume that we got rid of all the forces but if we just stopped these objects from like for fun if we stopped them from the center point of earth and just stopped all the motion in the center we could watch as the crust of the earth flew off and ripped apart through the atmosphere and people on one side of the earth would go fly off with the crust which would be fun but universe sandbox 2 isn't going to simulate this for us quite sadly. So, assuming that everything stays together on the planets after we lose all the velocity, what's going to happen? So we have everything accelerating towards the sun now, and they are gaining speed rather quickly. We're playing at about 13 hours per second, but if we slow this down to one second per second, aka real time, let's see what things look like. 1.01 second per second, close enough for me. Our acceleration isn't ridiculous. If we go to meters per second, I think we will have a clearer view. So, one, two, wait, let's click off. Let's see how quickly we are accelerating. So, we've got our speed. Let's bring it to meters per second. And let's wait until that speed is... <laughs> okay, so... We're not going to be able to do this in seconds. That'll take far too long. So let's go to one minute per second, I think. We're going to move it to one minute per second just to see how quickly things are accelerating. So it appears that every three minutes we're gaining one meter per second, which doesn't sound way, uh, like much. But, if we let time go by, if we go into the days per second, so every 365, uh, actually days per second is way too much, even hours per second, every 24 seconds now is one day, or now it is, uh, which means that we are currently, if we count to 24, look how far we're moving. We're moving really fast, considering the amount of time going on here. Within a week, we go very... Let's So we're starting here. Let's go to a day per second. And let's start here. This right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we started here and got to here, the acceleration uh, plus just the amount of uh, gravity from the sun acting on the earth is immense. And it's causing us to move much faster than we want to because as we get closer, earth is going to start noticing some differences. Our surface temperature, 
let's ignore the seasons and stuff all being thrown off, but our surface temperature is rising. We're getting close enough to the sun that the excess heat is not being reflected. It's all being absorbed now. The earth is not meant to hold this much. And now we are over 20 degrees Celsius for the average surface temperature. This has very devastating effects. We can already see the effects on the North Pole and uh, oh, Antarctica no longer exists. Yeah, that, that's one effect. Uh, but over by our polar regions, we can see that even uh, Greenland over here doesn't have any snow on it anymore. It has all melted. Now we're at 31 degrees, and as time goes on, we gain speed, and now things get ridiculous. We are gaining speed extremely quickly. We're halfway to boiling point. All of the green on the earth is starting to disappear as green uh, life plants are not going to be able to survive these heat changes. The ocean levels are rising, and we can see that Florida, Florida is now actually uh, kind of underwater. Yes, it's a, almost more water than it is land now. Same with it looks like a bit of by the mississippi river we've got a lot of flooding going on cuba is flooded mexico all along the coast uh, we've got some serious issues right now going worldwide it's not just america uh, but as time goes by we are at 60 degrees let's speed things back up again oh 90 degrees geez i went a little bit too fast there Let's go back and see the effects of this. Now, we aren't quite at boiling average, but lots of parts of the world are at boiling point. So, uh, thinner parts of the ocean are now evaporated. The land is actually expanding now. Even though all of that ice melted, now it's doing the opposite effect, and the oceans are receding due to all the water moving into the atmosphere. Florida has about doubled in size. Uh... A lot of land bridges are being created between several countries. Much easier to travel across Saudi Arabia into Asia. We've got we've got a lot of interesting things going on. Actually, it looks like very soon the UK is getting a lot bigger. But very soon we're going to have a land bridge from North America to Greenland to Iceland to the UK and all the way into Europe. You'll be able to walk right across into another continent. And let's let time go a little bit further where the surface temperatures average is going to actually be over 100. Aha, so things get exponentially hotter. So in the past few minutes, we have jumped to 1700 degrees. And as you can see, it's increasing extremely quickly we're going at real time right now and it's rising about five degrees per second oh wait that's four times so like one degree per second somewhere around there the earth is heating up so quickly now that it's taking longer for the water to evaporate uh than it's heating up so even though it's so much higher than the boiling point of water it's staying because it needs more time to uncondense. It appears that there's probably going to be an ocean left on Earth when it hits the sun. There just isn't enough time. So let's see if I'm right. It appears that the oceans are very slowly receding, but the sun is getting larger and larger in the horizon. Let's see what it looks like from Earth. Let's jump on to central United States and look into the sky. Oh yes, that is frightening. Assuming someone managed to survive, which they didn't because it's now 2500 degrees Celsius, uh, they would be feeling some very, very strange forces in effect as the Earth is now expanding and the gravity from the sun is warping the crust and the amount of heat, instead of just boiling the water, it is throwing it off of the earth and we can see this in this small cloud left behind almost like the trail of a comet earth is now getting extremely close to the sun in any second now we are going to have collision 
The Earth will not survive this. Well, duh. <laughs> but leaving our little cloud behind, the Earth is no longer existent as it smashes into the surface of the Sun, which is technically plasma and not completely solid, but it's condensed to a point where it's kind of like jumping off of a diving board and uh, doing a uh, landing on your stomach. It's going to be painful anyways. Now this is slightly unrealistic, but we can see that the sun has in fact been hit because its color has changed for a moment as the heavier elements of the earth coat it. The earth is being absorbed into the sun. Realistically, it would be pulverized to pretty much nothingness but it is going to leave a small mark behind uh, this isn't from Earth this is from I think Venus running into it but Earth's mark right here is going to spread over the Sun over time and Earth is going to have some strange effects that I can only assume would be pretty crazy because the Earth's magnetic field would get intertwined with that of the Sun. The Sun has serious magnetic fields going on, so I have no clue what would happen there, but I'm sure it would be very scientific and interesting. And it looks like the shockwave left over from this is moving over the Sun, and the Sun has taken enough of a beating from its own planets to change its color. Now, there's more to come. We have Mars coming in quickly. <clears throat> and that's going to be a direct hit again. But what's going to be interesting is when the bigger planets start coming in. Now, we're eating the inner asteroid belt. We're going to be eating Vesta, some of the bigger objects. But Jupiter and Saturn, will they be enough to actually impact the sun in a way that's meaningful? It's a good question, and we will see the answer in a second. Jupiter is now accelerating towards the sun in an increasing manner. It's at 30, 40, 50 meters per second and gaining. I think it's going to hit slightly above probably 100 kilometers, not meters, kilometers uh, per second. Yeah, we're going to be at about 200 actually at this rate. Ooh, so as Jupiter gets closer, the same thing is happening to it, honestly. Uh, we're getting that heat. We're going to start to see the outer layers of Jupiter get thrown off from the uh, massive, massive heat and radiation. Uh, we're actually at 300. We're going to be at about four to 500 kilometers per second when we hit. But well, let's look at something very quickly. Let's put this in terms of light speed so we are actually at almost one and a half thousandths of light speed that may not sound like much but that's incredibly fast and the amount of energy Jupiter is going to be displacing upon hitting the Sun is enough that the Sun's structure is getting a little bit uh strange um, the game is lagging a slight amount from all the particles and all the uh, off-gassing that's going on right now. Let's see the effect on the sun. The sun's temperature is currently at 63,000 degrees Kelvin. Jupiter is hit, and it is going up. The details on the sun have actually kind of disappeared a little bit. And that's because I think it just stopped doing fusion. <laughs> I think Jupiter just offset enough of the mass that nuclear fusion is no longer occurring in the sun. Um, I can't see any of the plasma. I may be wrong. Nope, I am not wrong. Uh, Jupiter has offset it enough. So the surface temperature is dropping extremely quickly. Um... The death of nuclear fusion is going to uh, very, very much impact the sun. Now, this was partly caused by the amount of material that was just knocked off of the sun, causing a lot less gravitational force in the core. And a bit was caused by it going off balance. But the result of this is the sun is now kind of dead. Um, 
This isn't the most realistic result, but considering it's Universe Sandbox 2, we're going to accept it and watch the results. Now that the sun is kind of dead, uh, let's see, how much lap mass did it lose? Wow. That collision knocked off 95% of the mass of the sun. This right here is 95% of the mass of the sun. So each of these pieces must be pretty huge. Or maybe not all of them. This one's 47 moons. This one's 6 times the mass of Earth. This one's 25 times the mass of Earth. These fragments are each going to become ginormous planets if they cool down. But instead they're going to spread out and rip apart. Um... And that's going to provide material for new planets in the future. We have more stuff coming in. It's not going to be as exciting anymore, though, with the sun cooling down and shrinking due to its collapse. Not like a supernova collapse, but more like can't do fusion anymore, so it's kind of calmed down. The sun is now a gas planet, and it's just big enough that it's going to keep the heat on the inside from the amount of pressure but not big enough to do anything with it. And so with that, nothing is really being attracted towards the sun anymore, which means that things like Saturn that were speeding towards the sun before, well, since the sun's going this way, Saturn's going to swing by where the sun once was, but it's going to keep going forever. And Saturn now is going to face the bitter truth of space, which is that it's quite boring. Um if you go too far away, and now Saturn is stuck between our solar system and another, and it's going to take a very long time for Saturn to find any friends, and it's going to get extremely close to absolute zero while doing so. So that that's number one. I actually did not expect that to last so long, so I think... We're going to make a second video for the second situation because this one has taken a while. Thank you all for watching this. Please leave a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. And I will see you all next time with more Universe Sandbox 2. Bye.